Service transition. When we transition technology, there are three processes involved. This video is going to walk through those three processes that are part of release and deployment management from an IDEAL perspective. When you talk about transition, there's a lot of confusion. Think of the different things that are involved. Data, testing, deployment, what's your roadmap? Are you planning? Are you in integration? It goes on and on. And the most common response that I get when I ask people about where that fits, they say that's in release. The reality is ITIL's release and deployment management is a collection of way too many things. If you haven't seen my other video, check it out. Look at, it looks at the differences between the idea of a best practice versus a recommendation. IDEO claims that their framework is a framework of best practices, but as I've tried to explore who's implemented release and deployment management, most people have not. And so the reality is it's really a framework of recommendations. That's all right, we can use that, but let's explore it. Let's step out of service transition a little bit and ask what are the problems that we're trying to address? There are really three, what we need to transition and when, which resources, who will be doing the transition and which equipment will they be using in the process? And the third, it's just frankly, will it work when we get it into a production environment and we want our users to use it? And so let's explore those three problems. The first one is really addressing planning and communication. And within that, there's a couple different issues. Uh, we need a way to be, that we can capture unmet requests, kind of a backlog, if you will. We need to be able to prioritize and plan our effort in transition. We have to coordinate the needs uh, to our project management office so we can keep them in, clearly engaged. And we have to communicate our progress as we're going through transition. That process is really release management. It works with the output of whatever uh, process you're using for service strategy and service design to really implement uh, what's coming for a product or service. So it's linked to one of the products or services that you're managing in the organization. A release is made up of features. And again, a feature is something that your users would understand. It's a business capability. It's a business feature uh, that they'll use when it gets there. Um, the other thing that release management provides is a way to capture that backlog of feature requests. Uh, those are things that users or uh, part of your staff have recognized would be nice to add to a product or service, but it's not integrated into a release, so it's in a queue. The next problem is really looking at who's doing what when. That's resource utilization. Resources include both human and capital equipment. In any organization from the smallest startup to the largest publicly traded organizations are really chartered to make the best use of their equipment, uh, human and capital equipment. So how do you get the most use out of the equipment that you've purchased? And how do you help your staff really be the most efficient and most effective at the jobs they're doing for you? The next is ability to combine requests, whether that's coming in from a release or whether that's coming in from uh, various other inputs for small transition changes. Uh, if you can combine those into something larger, into a larger, more coordinated effort, you can get better utilization out of your staff and your equipment. As we move from crazy new idea in development out to production environments, often uh, we want to stage that through multiple environments. We need a process that can coordinate that environment usage, both from who's using it and what they're using, where environment is a collection of different technologies. As we move through those environments, we also need a way that we can evaluate the capabilities in, cl in close to decide if it's ready and uh, should be moved forward onto the next environment towards production. Not everything that moves through is, is really ready for uh, customer usage, and we have to have a way that we can pull things out so they can be addressed later. This process is enterprise deployment. It's the second of the release and deployment processes, and it really focuses on deployment. 
A deployment is made up of deployment units. Those are the standalone sets of capabilities that may or may not go forward as we move through environments. And a deployment will be associated with a number of different environments, depending on the technologies, depending on the organization, to know how they need to move through as they go from development onto production. An environment is a set of configuration items that must be mapped to production, so they represent a subset of the production environment. The third problem area is really understanding how do we provide reliable implementations. We need a consistent way to transition new technologies into production environments or any change controlled environment. We have to understand that the authorization for each of those transitions is going to vary. It could be part of a product team as they're moving through their own environments or as it scales up in its pre-production or production, there's going to be a different need for authorization before that's done. We also need a way to, once the authorization is granted, how do we coordinate the deployment activities so we know that the right people are doing the right thing at the right times. We also need a way that we can track the results so that we can look back over time to determine which transitions were successful and which ones need to be improved if we do them again. This process is operational change deployment. It's the third of the release and management processes. Operational change deployment, as the name sort of implies, is embedded within change management. It's almost a subset of it. If you read ITIL's change management volume, you'll see it reference deployment activities multiple times or release and deployment activities. This is really what it's talking about. As a change is moved through, there are operational change deployment that, uh, activities that have to occur. The focus of this effort is really on the deployment plans. And there are four important plans. The first one is an implementation plan. Those are the specific steps to perform the, the transition, how to move the capability to that new set of CIs, that new environment. The next is a test or validation plan. And that's how do you validate if the implementation was successful, if it needs to be rolled back, or should be considered a failed forward situation. The next plan is the communication plan. That's who needs to know what during the deployment window. And of course, the last plan is if the test validation plan says that it needs to be rolled back or remediated, you need a remediation plan. How do you restore the environments to a pre-transition uh, state? The operational change deployment process also unlocks the potential for automation. And the key to that thought is that it unlocks the potential. That's going to vary wildly depending on the maturity of the organization and the technologies they're using and the staff that's involved. So if you take a step back and look at the three problem areas in release and deployment management, you'll see that there are three processes. Release management, looking at the communication and planning, Enterprise deployment, making sure you get the most out of our human and capital equipment. And operational change deployment, making sure that we're having reliable transition each and every time. But those processes don't stand on their own. These processes are part of a larger web of how your organization functions. The first is understanding how your organization works with the rest of the, the organization and your users to understand services to craft a service strategy and service design. Um, some may use IDLE service strategy and service design framework. Some organizations will develop their service strategy and design by embracing the concept of product management. It's a proven discipline to discover and address unmet business needs. As that sh is shaped and formed, that will integrate into release management so you know what features to include in a release and can plan that roadmap out. As a release is planned, it needs to work with project management to provide planning, control, and management over the delivery of that technology solution. The project management and team is the one that will work with enterprise deployment management to make sure that that technology solution is transitioned across the multiple environments in between development and production. But in order for that to happen, we have to, be, we have, to have an environment management process. We also, 
need to have a data management process that as those environments are established, that we're putting the right data set in there. That could be a, a full copy of production data, or it could be a subset that's been cleaned, or it could be manufactured data specific for that environment. The next process is operational change deployment, which is part of change management. And that's, remember, how we provide a consistent and repeatable process for transition. But that needs to be integrated tightly with configuration management so we can track the current state of controlled configuration items. So as you can see, the three processes of release and deployment management, release, enterprise deployment, and operational change deployment, are linked in with a handful of other processes in your organization. But it doesn't have to be confusing. Not everything is release. Release has a specific role to address three separate problems. Thanks for listening. I hope you got something out of this. If you've got more questions about IDLE and specifically release and deployment, contact me. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks. Bye.